Thanks for the reminder. Right, so the, 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 the questions that may have had some issue, just let me pull it back up here, have it separately. Um, maybe question five slightly. Um, question six, part C, which is just a little bit unusual. And that was just for more mathematics and signals and systems, but just to get you thinking a little bit. And then I think um, problems 10, 11, and 12, I'll just run 10, sorry, 10, 12, and 13, just to run through quickly because students sometimes have little issues still um, doing the derivatives or, or, or manipulating um, uh, piecewise continuous signals. Yeah? So um, let me see if you want to, after that, if, if, if there's anything else that you want me to add on problem set one, we could kind of look, look at it. So let me see, um, go through here, question. These were straightforward. I don't think the, the answers are there. Um, the compression question. All right, so question five, right? So question five, you were given, you were given this, um, this broad sort of signal that, that stretched. Let me see if I could pull it up here. I have it, I have it on a separate um, screen here. Right, so question five, you were given um, a, a signal here um, that ran from minus one to two, an amplitude from zero to two uh, um, with, a, with a sort of ramp and, and a step in it. And then you were asked to, to um, um, uh, what do you call it? Manipulate the signal by applying these particular functions to it. And of course, inside of here u1 minus t is a reverse unit step right that is delayed at um by one unit so the the unit step itself for this thing would actually be this i'm exaggerating so when you apply that um when you apply that to the signal it will lop off everything before here right so everything before here will be equal to zero and everything after here, uh, um going this way will exist. So 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 that, that's fairly straightforward. This other one here, you remember we saw that ut <clears throat> minus ut minus one is basically that is how you create a pulse. So ut would be this ut minus one would be this so if you take the difference of the two of them, you're left with the this bit in the middle here. <clears throat> and if you multiply a signal by that, like xt here, then it's only going to, the only bit that is not zero is going to be this little bit here in, in the middle. And then the other one, you multiply it by an impulse at t equal to, at, at an impulse that is occurring at t at, um, t equal to three over two. So whatever is the value of the, the signal is going to sift, and this is the sifting property here. So it's going to sift out the value that alone of whatever xt was at that point, and xt happened to be two. So what you basically have there is that it's going to sift out the value at x equal to two, right? Again, the, the, the normal little manipulation. So that, that should have been fairly straightforward. Anybody had any difficulties with that? You should know. Yeah? And if we go along here, this one, question six, part C. Okay. This one again is the sifting property that we're looking at here. So you're trying to, you have a signal and you're multiplying it by an impulse, but the impulse is defined a little bit differently here. We know that the definition of an impulse is an integral D, um, what do you call it, delta, what am I doing? Delta T D, t kind of thing between minus infinity and infinity and uh, we know that that is one that is the definition of the impulse so we need to get this into this form here 
And it's just a question of um, changing the variables, right? So you let, um, well, here we use a lambda, we could use anything, k, c, whatever you want, but you derive it now um, in terms of, the, of, of a new variable of integration and just change the limits accordingly. Well, the limits, of course, going from minus infinity to infinity, so that's, that's not an issue. It's just a dt is going to change to d lambda over two. All right, and then you're back to square one. So if I have a, a, an impulse, which is the integral here, and just change it, let's clear that a little bit. All right, so I now have the integral, the integral um, delta lambda d lambda. So the, the parts in red are our impulse at delta at delta lambda impulse at lambda equal to zero right so instead of defining it in terms of lambda of t we defined it in terms of, of lambda and the other constants now are just you just evaluate as normal so if if you put lambda equal to zero here e to the one e to the um you'll get um minus two over two which is e to the minus one which is one over e and you have a half because of the change of variable. Okay, so the answer is just simply one over two e. There's more um, sort of um, calculus manipulation and understanding. This was just so that you should understand what um, what we mean by an impulse. The impulse is is not the, the, the definition of the impulse is the integral delta t dt equal to one. So anytime you see, anytime you're given a, a problem where that doesn't occur, for instance, here in the next problem down is clear. We have the integ we have the integral delta t dt. So that is my unit impulse definition here. An impulse at t equal to zero, and you could evaluate that one fairly straightforward. Yeah. Everybody all right with that? Any any issues with that? Yeah. All right. Okay, so the next one I said that would have been an interest of interest to us. It is the time invariance as not an issue nine yeah this one right so question 10. lambda is assumed to be a number no 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 lambda is just a change of variable you 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 know that like sometimes when you're integrating um in your calculus when you're integrating sometimes in order to make the integration simpler you change the variable of integration Right, so so what, what you're doing is that right with respect the, the variable of integration, we're changing it from t as it was to lambda, so that we can get it in the form that we un, that 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 is defined that the 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 um the unit impulse is defined as. So we are defining the impulse in terms of lambda now instead of t. So it's just a change of variable. The good thing is that the limits of integration running from minus infinity to infinity. So no amount of changing lambda from lambda to t going to affect that, um, but the, 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 the dt and the d lambda, um, dt is d lambda over two, and that's the only part of the, 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 the um, problem that you have to remember. All right, okay, so this one was one of these that, that cops up every, um, every year kind of thing, right? So you have y equal to, um, you have a, a, a signal X here, and then you want to do this manipulation. So of course you do it in a, in a particular sequence. The first thing of course is that you find from um, XT, if this is XT, um, you flip it around. So you find X minus T, and X minus T of course is you, you draw the thing in reverse. And remember, one of the things I always tell students is that if you're doing this, if, if a question like this comes in anywhere, right? Um, use paper, right? Don't, don't try to do everything 
in one drawing. So the first thing, get around. So it is now going to run, um, it's going to run the same minus two um, t to plus two t, but everything is reversed and make sure you get it proper. Sometimes when people flip it around, they, 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 um, they, they draw it, like I've seen like this happen and instead of here, you accidentally draw it, something like that. Okay, unintentional, but it will end up giving you an, an incorrect answer. So be careful when you draw it. These are one of the things that you do in pencil. Okay, so you're allowed to do this in pencil. So the first thing is to find x minus t. <clears throat> and what do you do? Do you shift it in time or do you scale it in time? What's the next step? So in other words, do I go to x2 minus t or do I go to x minus t over 3? Right? Remember that the, the, the time shift affects only t. So look at, and, and we had a sequence to follow in the slides. If you go to x2 minus t, then when you divide by 3, is that an expansion or a compression? If I divide by 3, is that an expansion or right? It's an expansion, OK? So if I divide, let's say I did this one first, right? When I shift it, what I'm going afterwards, if I do this and then I expand, what I'm going to get from this approach is 2 minus t over 3. If I go here, if I take this approach, then after I do this, when I shift, I'm going to shift the T on top here. So I'm going to get the correct answer. So there's a sequence of events to follow. All right. So the next step will be to, which is the next step therefore? Expand it. Right, so if you expand it, right, so you expand it, and the expansion on here, this is one that, that, that you're allowed to do on the same diagram. So, so what I sometimes allow students to do is, let me go back, not, not, not what I allow, what, what I would suggest that you could do, you have the, the diagram here. So if you're going to expand on the same diagram that we have here, right you're expanding it by three so it means that this point is now six this is three this is minus three and this is minus six <clears throat> all right so you go sorry that's not one second all right so on one diagram so you can put the, the original one and then you could put you could just label this for me and tell me this is minus t over three here. So you'd have to redraw the diagram, okay? Could save you one diagram that way. And that way, on the, on the same diagram, you actually could see the values there and there um, in case you make um, any error, it, to, to avoid an error in, in, um, in copying it over. Does this change? Mm, is this strange? Yeah, you're correct, Sadie. So, so, and we'll get to that. You could do it the same way afterwards. So, 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 hold that thought for a second. So, question: Does this this three on top here change? No, correct, right? So, so we have no amplitude scaling. So, having done the 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 the, the expansion. All right, we're shifting it right by two units. T minus two, so, sorry, two minus T is our right shift. If you 
can't figure it out or you forgot where is t equal to zero, where the t equal to zero point has gone. It has gone to the t, to, to, to t equal to two now. So in other words, everybody shifts right by two units. So this is your final answer down below, okay? So Sadie, to answer your question, if you had done it before, if you had done, all right? So if we took this and instead, all right? If you want to do it in, a, in another sequence, x2 minus t over three, right? Is the same as x, as you said, six minus t over three, is it? Right, so what you have to do is then shift this. If you want to do the, the, the shifting first, all right, six minus, I should put some brackets here, six minus t over three, right? X six minus t or um, no, wait, wait, no, 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 you can't do it that way. If you, if you do it that way, you're going to run into some problems here. Oh, no, 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 no. So, so um, no, if you split it out in this case, you would have to do um, two thirds minus T over three, which is going to mess, mess you up. That is going to be a more, a more complicated one. So, so try to avoid that one, um, CD. It's not, not, not as clear. You would end up having, having to draw an additional diagram before you landed, landed up with the correct answer. So try not to do that one, all right? So, so the, first, the first one, expand this one, then um, do the time shift, all right? And the easy way, uh, of course, you got to check on mapping to see where the original points map to inside of here, just as a cross check, okay? Yeah? So follow that sequence. We had a sequence that we identified in class just to be safe and remember that the time scaling and the time shifting work with t so when you expand um wherever t happens to be when you expand it's going to expand that part of it alone not the constant part all right so 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 um what you would have gotten there was was um, two minus t over three instead of two minus t all over three all right so you have to um, just be careful with that Right, um, so that was that one. And then the other question I said to look at would have been um, uh, or, or the derivatives. I think um, they, they, I don't have the solution here for that one, but finding the derivative of that. Right, so let's go back to the, the, the beginning here. I think the, the, the question asked, the last Part. Let me just see what it was. Question. Right. So, as a derivative, there were two two questions asked to, 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 to find the derivatives of. We could do this one here, right, which is fairly straightforward, right. If I'm finding the derivative of something like this, right. So, if I'm finding the derivative of something like this, again. The first thing you look at, you look at it and see, this is a step. What's the derivative of a step? What's the derivative of a step? An impulse, right? So that the, the first this point here, you now have an impulse. Okay, what's the derivative of this bit here? And remember back, where's the derivative? A derivative is a rate of change. Is there changing? Nothing, correct, right? So, right, so that between these two points here, 
Yeah, nothing. Between minus 1 and 0, what's the derivative there? In other words, the rate of change is what? 1. No, not a unit step, Stephen. It's a constant. It's a, a straight line whose slope is 1. So that's a constant. 1. Okay? From at 0, what's happening? It's changing suddenly from 2 to 3. So what's the derivative there? An impulse, correct, another impulse. So you have an impulse right here. Okay, between three, sorry, between zero and one, what's the derivative? Zero, correct, All right, oops. Right, what's happening at one, at point one? It's going from three to zero. So what's that? What's the derivative of that? Right, a negative impulse, exactly, right? So it's going from it's a, this is a negative step here. Right, this is a negative step here. So therefore, the derivative of that is going to be an impulse here. Going minus 3. And between 1 and 2, what's, this, well, what's the derivative there? No, not one. Look at the line. Minus one, right. Good. And then what happens at point two? At point two, we have a positive step. We're going from minus one back to zero. So what's the derivative of that? A positive impulse, right. Right? So that the overall answer has one, two, three, four impulses and four constant zones of um in the inside of there, right? So there's a zero, a one, a zero, a minus one. All right? So you go, it's piecewise continuous, and you look at each section. Every time you have a sudden change, a sudden change from one value to another, all right, as we do here, as we do here, as we do here, right, as we do here, and as we do here, every sudden change is going to give me an impulse. And in between there, the derivative is the rate of change. So you just um, you just work it out accordingly. Okay. And the question twelve, well, the solution is exactly the same problem. There were some um, step changes and some some slopes. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. I think the, the, the problem sets up, the, the rest of the solutions are fairly straightforward here. Okay, so let's see problem set number two, which um, had to do, well, okay, so, so this is where we're getting into um, a little more complex. Let me just pull up that one. Yes, Edi, what's up? Question? Okay. All right, so let me pull. Okay, so problem set two is up. 
can you do a just on let me hold on hold on let me that that disappeared can you do a time scaling on a derivative yeah it, yeah then um you could do time scaling shifting on any signal so for instance you could pass a signal and just think about it from from a practical point of view i could pass a signal um through an through 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 um uh, a differentiator circuit and then after that i do manipulations on it with the rest of the circuit so so there's no particular reason why i can't do one on the one or the other right the the, the problem here or the, these sort of questions are just to let you um, think about um, what happens when a signal meets the, this sort of process. So it goes through an integrator, it goes through a differentiator, it goes through a delay, it goes through an inverting amplifier. So it gets flipped around, it gets um, delayed somewhere, it gets integrated or, or, or a derivative taken of it. And what happens? Right, but it can actually not no 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 not a not a dumb question. You just have to um what I want you all to do, and, and not only here but elsewhere in, in your program as well, don't compartmentalize things. So so don't because we talk we happen to be talking about um shifting and, and derivation here, and, and your mind is focused on that. But remember that these operations can occur in any sequence at any point of, 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 a, of a system. All right. So anywhere along the 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 the, the, the road could happen. We just happen to be doing it here in a in a in a very um, sort of contrived problem, so that somebody could work it out and see if you understand what really goes on. When you have a sudden change, you present the the the, the system with a step change. Okay. When you when you um, when you have a, a a constant change of system, where when you have a, a, a continuous um, increase or decrease. A, a derivation will give you a constant value, either positive or negative. Okay, so it's just to put everything in one and, 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 and evaluate it graphically instead of asking you to do the derivative manually, which is what you would have done in your math. Yeah? Okay, so right, so not uh, mo most people here, and, and um, before we, we go on to the next problem set, so they, they, Tutorial tomorrow is, sorry, tutorial, the midterm tomorrow, um, you have five questions to do. And I'm giving you a bit of extra time, but the, the overall questions should not take you more than 90 minutes to do. But the entire session will start at one and you will have it until 3.15, 3 to upload your answers. After that, everything will close off. I am suggesting that you take, um, you, you leave 30 minutes for the scanning and uploading, which will mean that you have about 105 minutes, um, to, which is like an hour and 45 minutes to, to, um, to do the problem set and, um, you know, figure out any issues and that kind of thing. As of, of course, uh, the, the usual thing is open books and uh, open book and notes and so on. You just can't talk to each other. But you have ample time to do it. Um, the five questions together count 100 marks, but some questions count more than others. So you're going to have to decide how you want to spend your time. And the usual rule is that if you decide how much time you're going to spend on a question, once the time runs out, go on to another question. It's better to have five attempts and make some mistakes here and there than to do three good questions, hoping to get full marks and then nothing in the others. Okay? Always attempt everything. But you will have ample time. And as I say, um, you, you plan yourself accordingly, but it will open up at 1 o'clock and it will close at 3.15. And it's not going to take you um that length of time to do the, the the question paper yeah all right and um just as a as a sort of concession because of what we did last week and so on tomorrow's tomorrow morning's class we will have from 10 to 11 instead of giving you a two-hour class so you'll have a one-hour class in, in in electronics tomorrow morning and we will finish at 11 so that you can go and prepare yourself and so on and, and you come back at one and do the do the midterm all right but make sure and come to class tomorrow right so 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 we could at least do do some work on that 
Fair enough? All right? And it's, it's not bad. I mean, the, the, the midterm last week wasn't, wasn't that bad. And they got extra time. Now, this one should be even more straightforward, assuming that you have been doing the work. I mean, if you're going to watch all the 55,000 lectures and so on that we had since then, um, tonight, then you might be in a little bit of a problem. Okay, but everything is based on what, what we have done so far. Okay? Yeah? No, maybe. I notice people stop talking to me again. Anyway. Hmm? Unders well, yeah, understood, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's like when we're on a boat. Yes, sir. There we go. All right, so um, let's look at problem set two. Problem set two, question one. Let me see. Uh, let me see if there are any things that should have given you an issue in this. These are all longer type um, manipulation questions and so on. Um, let me see what the solutions, what solutions I have here. Trying to see which ones should have um the laplace transform ones shouldn't give you too many issues let me see if there's something else that i needed to remind you of okay let's look at the you're free to tell me if any of the others um, look strange. Let me just run the convolution question pass here. Any, anybody had any issues with the convolution question? Hmm? There's a little change I want to make here. Right, this was one of them that I told you all um, is one of the types here. Just a little issue here. Let me just make that, that change here. Right, instead of there, this should be t less than zero here. Remember, I made a change um, when I had done this, the, the, this problem set. Um, at that point in time, to, to standardize everything, I realized that some books were doing it like this, and some books were doing it the way that we do it in class. No, no issue, and I'm not going to penalize you. Uh, for it. But remember what we said is that in, in our case, what we would say is we have the signals changing at t equal to zero, for instance, here. So this zone would have been t less than zero, and then the next zone would have been t greater than or equal to zero, and t less than, well, whatever it is. I think we have two here, t minus two less than zero. Okay? Um, that is kind of is not too important in terms of the answer, but this was one of those problems that I told you all about, where the um, the pulses were slightly different in length. So what you're going to have is that you're going to have a zone of no overlap. Then you're going to have a zone where this pulse, at some point in time will reach a maximum so that the, the, the convolution is going to go up to some maximum value. And then as this pulse moves through, because the pulse area is constant, the area of overlap is going to be constant. So the, the, the um, convolution is going to have a constant value. And then as you go forward in time, Like to here, the zone of overlap is going to decrease and then it's going to go back down, right? So when you have pulses, identical pulses, um, if they are identical in time, then the convolution just simply goes up to a maximum and comes back down. If one is bigger than the other, it's going to go up to a maximum, stay constant, and then start to decrease. And that was the, 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 the issue here. The answers, of course, in the areas of overlap are supposed to be functions of t, okay? 
So make sure, make sure when you, when, you, when you do that, that you get an answer that is a function of t. Okay, the limits will always be a function of t and you can set the value of t to whatever you want. Anybody on this you with this one? All right. Um, this one, anybody had an issue with this particular one? Let's see what the original question was. The original question was... Right, so find the convolution of the two variables there, f1x and f2x, okay? Of course, I happen to flip around f2 instead of, of, of f1. You could have done it the other way around. You could have flipped around f1 um, and, and left f2 in place. The important thing, of course, is the equation for that line. Right, so either way, you're going to have to find, you're going to have to find an equation, a definition for this line, and of course, to define that. So always, when you put out a problem, the first thing that you do is to tell me F1, T, for instance, equal, and you write it down, F2, T, equal. Right, and make sure that you, you, you um, get it correct. The original F, F2, All right, the original F2 was, that's not, let me change this color here, was going like this, right? Not to T. So what's the equation of that? Can't remember, what's the height? What was the height given here? The height it was going up from, sorry, from minus one to two, from minus one to two, and the height was six. Let me draw that properly here for, for us then. Minus one to, go back here, minus one to plus two, and the height was six. So you go back here. So the original F2 was running from minus one, minus one to two, and the height was six. So what's the equation here for that? F2 is equal to what? F2 is equal to what? Anybody? In any case, you're going to have to find it at some point in time. Right? And it's fairly easy. You need to find the slope. What's the slope of that line? Well, the usual mx plus c, if you like. Right? Or mt plus c. Right, what's M? What's M for this? The slope of the line is 2. Right, so F2 is equal to 2T. And what's the constant? We have to find a constant. Everybody agree with that? 2t plus 2. Easy to check. When t is minus 1, ft is supposed to be equal to 0, right? So when t is minus 1, you have minus 2 plus 2, which is 0. OK. And if you happen to be flipping this around, which is what I did for the diagram, when you flip it around, the equation here, where is t you're going to replace by t minus tau? So this is going to be 2 t minus tau plus 2, right, which is 2t minus 2 tau plus 2. 
okay so in integrating that you remember if, if you're integrating this for instance with respect to t this will give me um t squared minus two tau by t right plus two t okay so you have to remember that this the, the integrating um uh, sorry you're integrating with respect what, what am i doing you're integrating with respect to tau not t my mistake so you're going to get 2t tau here, 2t tau, 2 tau squared over 2, and, and 2 tau at that point in time. T is the, t is the limit, All right? And then you could run it through here. You're integrating with respect to tau, and then you substitute for t after. And then, of course, if you flip it around, note, note the limits here for this one. The front of the pulse is t plus one. The back of the pulse is t minus two. All right. Anybody did it the other way and so left f f two as is and flipped around um, f one. Hmm. No? You would get the same answer. Remember, F1 convolved with F2 is the same as F2 convolved with F1. So you should get the same answer that we have here. All right? And notice because you're dealing with a line when you integrate the, 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 the area with a, a sloping line, you're going to get um, quadratics come in. So if you integrate, um, with respect to, sorry, the, any line going looking like that, you integrate that, you're going to get a quadratic now. All right, hence the squares appearing in the answer. Right. So look at it, and if, if anybody, if you have any um, issues with it, um, you can email me um, during the course of today. Uh, right after this, I have another little meeting, but I'll try to answer it during the course of today. All right, and let's go quickly to um, the problem set um, three, which was the block diagram ones, right, which should have been question one was, um, well, let me ask ask you this let me go through here question one and two question one's case um yes all right that's one of those things that i told you you have to be able to look at these diagrams and see things all in your head and so on this Little thing is is a is the same usual feedback block. It's just backwards, um, kind of backward, wrong side mirror image, right? So once you see that, the rest of this problem was easy, okay. And remember, if this was drawn, sometimes you might see things drawn like this. So we have one line doing this, and then the other line going back this way. Let's separate the line, uh, a junction like, and have it like that to kind of make the diagram look a little clearer for you. Okay, this one actually didn't have any feedback at all. This was all feed forward. All right, so this should have been fairly easy. This one, as I said, this one had, um, at least two ways I could see of doing it. Some problems actually have more ways of, uh, um, to solve than others, and some are simpler. This one had a had a had a simple way and a complex way. Both will give you the same answer. It's just a complex solution. You have to be a little bit careful in the manipulation, right? So once you tried it, um, and of course, if you, you could only double check and let me know if I made a mistake in the simplifications, of course. Um, so this particular one, the, the, the first thing was to move, move that line and then simp so, you, so you got, if you move the line, 
then you were able to get a, a, fee, a feedback loop here to, to simplify. And then um, if you shifted the second line down below here, you got another big feedback loop on top here to simplify. And then after that, you had the final big simplification to do, which was this one here. All right. As I said, usually the answer, when you simplify the answer, you shouldn't be getting, look, this is what the final answer look, looks like here, right? Usually you shouldn't get answers with like um, G2 squared, those kind of terms coming up inside of there, right? If you get something like that, it means something didn't cancel around the place, right? Usually the problems wouldn't give you that, that, that term. Um, kind of um, answer coming in, all right? So, and again, this is one of those cases when you draw in the diagrams, don't try to do everything in one um, step and one drawing and change too many things. Draw over the diagram, use paper, draw the diagram sideways if you want to take up more space. Okay, I, 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 it doesn't matter. To me, the important thing is that I don't want you all to, to by trying to force everything to fit into some small space that you end up um, making mistakes and draw the thing in pencil, all right? So if you try something and it, it doesn't work, then of course you could simply erase it and, and, and go back, right? The simpler solution is, is the other one here. If you make the, the two um, shifts here where you, where, where you shift the lines for H, um, H3 and, and then um, this bit here, right? If I move this here, actually moving it before the block, but you remember the summing junctions we said could, could swap positions because it doesn't matter is A plus B plus C and A plus C plus B, et cetera, is the same thing. It doesn't matter the sequence. So you can manipulate um, um, those summing junctions as you see fit. Right, the one thing you can't do is to swap a summing junction and uh, you can't interchange those. Right, so so that interchanging these not allowed, swapping these is. And once you do that, if you move them on either side, what you landed up with was two simple feedback blocks to uh, manipulate. And then after that, the, the problem came down to substituting and you're supposed to get the same answer that you did. Okay. If the summing junctions are the same, can the blocks on the junction, just now, let me get that question again. If the summing junctions are the same, can the blocks on the junction be added on or subtracted? Or the blocks connected to the junctions? No, no, remember it's a whole, it's a whole process. The, the only thing, don't, don't try to do too, too many things. So, if you have a summing junction like this, however the blocks are connected here, these go back to blocks, right? So each of these go back to a block somewhere. If I swap the position, if I swap the positions of these, right? The block connection goes with it, all right, so the block connection will go with it. So it, it, the block connection is following the summing junction, but as far as what is happening in here, right? A and B, C and D, it doesn't matter the sequence because adding and subtracting are linear operations, okay? So you make sure on the, the, the block connection will follow, of course. All right, but though you're not manipulating the block in any way, all you are doing is just moving where the block is summing to another block. Okay? Fair enough? Yeah? And then the last one, well, this one was just, this one was a, a wood problem. So you had a block diagram to simplify, and then you made a substitution in it. So this combine a number of things in, in one. So you, so you had the, um, it was doing a block diagram simplification. So you did it after a simple one. Then you put a step input and the step input was a five, a five um, times unit step. 
all right, a five degree sudden, sudden change. Anytime you see a sudden change, interpret that as a step change. And um, in this case, a five degree step change. So the input is five over S. The input is five over S. Um, so you substitute it into the transfer function that you had before. All right, so the five over S by that, you have that. And then the inverse Laplace transform of that, the usual thing, you break it up into partial fractions and you solve for the, um, the, the roots. This happens to have real roots. If it doesn't have real roots, you have a number of options. You can, um, as, as we did in the, the earlier part of this, you could, you could break it up into um, the, 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 what do you call it, complete the square and you, and you get it. Once it doesn't have real roots, once complex roots, you know the answer is going to have a sine and a cosine. So you get it into the form looking like either the sine or cosine. And then you find the, the inverse. Or if you remember the Laplace, tables have actually, if they, if they, um, if the particular transfer function is, if, is in the form of our AS plus B over CS squared plus DS plus E, if it's in that form, then you just get it into there and it goes straight into the Laplace tables and you can find the inverse there and then. But it's always a good idea to, to remember how to derive those things, things like completing the square, um uh dealing with real roots and dealing with complex roots and repeated roots as well yeah the usual sort of uh, manipulations okay so the answers i think um the the, the, the problem set solutions the, the answers are there if you were stuck but if you have any other issues and so on during the course of the day feel free to email me and i will respond um after lunch today i did not get it with I did not get it concerning the summing junction with respect to mid, the midterms 2020. Okay, you'll have to send me the question, CD, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you because I don't have the midterm for 2020 here with me. Okay, so if you could um, um, just, just, just give me a screenshot of the, the particular um, question and I'll, I'll try and get to it and, and see what happens. All right? No problem. Same thing for anybody, eh? if you have any, if you have any questions that, that popped up before, um, and you want to clarify, just, just let me know and I'll try to get it. It will be after, after lunch today. Okay. So, um, uh, let me end the recording here.